Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be talking about the To Be Revealed DLC. One that we're expecting to be Slanesh, obviously because of the background, but we're going to talk about the possible two other races. As we know, Total War Warhammer Lord packs are now changing where they'll include three races instead of two, and there's a lot of potential here. Normally I divide these into their own videos, however since we don't know what races will be included, I'm going with a possible theme. I've been talking about this with my viewer base on stream, and generally I've been thinking about this non-stop, as you know I'm a big Sunesh fan. So who better to face Sunesh? Well no other races make as much sense as the High Elves and the Dark Elves. Both races of elves have a long-standing history with Sunesh, mostly because Sunesh has been trying to corrupt and eat their souls. With regards to the High Elves, we know that Suneshi invasions and incursions happen fairly often, as Orth 1 is not really as safe as most people think. In fact, a lot of demonic incursions happen directly on the land, and they don't come from the ocean either. We've heard of some High Elves falling to Sunesh, but that is incredibly rare. The majority of Elves will try to avoid Sunesh at all costs, and even try to ward themselves against the Dark Prince of Pleasure. When we start looking towards the Dark Elves, this is where things get a little bit different. You see, the Dark Elves will try to avoid Sunesh. This is very common with pretty much any Elven faction. High Elf, Wood Elf, Dark Elf, and even the ones from Laurel on Forest. In short, all Elves are delicious. I don't imagine why, but hey, Sunesh has its own um, way of thinking. The Dark Elves still will try to avoid Sunesh at all costs, but there are some who have fallen under the sway of the Dark Prince. We know that there's a cult of Sunesh running around, and many look towards Mother Morathi as the cult's leader, and they embrace the Dark Prince's blessings more than anything else, but still try to actively avoid Sunesh. This is a big thing to note here, because they know without a shadow of the doubt that if they should fall, yeah, their souls belong to Slanesh regardless, and as you can imagine, not many people want that, right? So all three races are very closely associated with each other, and it could add for some pretty good theming. Slanesh is trying to hunt down the Elves, likely the High Elves. The High Elves are trying to get away. The the Dark Elves have been brought into this, likely either caught in the crossfire, or they're thinking, well, we see the Suneshi faction trying to go for the High Elves, if we push the High Elves closer to the Sunesh faction, this will weaken the High Elves and make it easier for us to retake our rightful home of Orthwan. It would be important to note that obviously the Dark Elves are not working with Sunesh here, though mind you, I could see a Morafi rework coming in and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but they're trying to get the two factions to fight, the two enemies to fight, and they could focus on their ultimate goal. Which, you know, makes sense and would be cool. The fact is, now that we have three factions being focused on DLCs, it could lead to some really interesting stories. So yesterday we spoke about the Sunesh faction, and I mentioned D'Challa, the Denied One. So D'Challa is a character who used to be a High Elf. She absolutely despises her fellow High Elves, and she would likely be hunting them down at any given opportunity. We're not going to talk about the whole thing here, as obviously we talked about that yesterday. It's like a 19-minute video. I suggest checking that out. But if she ends up being the Legendary Lord, that gives you already the catalyst for a good story. She's going to try and hunt down any High Elves, and the Dark Elves are going to try and push them to her. Now, like I said, Orphan is very, very defended, and even if she would find a way in through one of the portals that generally open up there, it would still be very dangerous, and it would be kind of stupid for her to attack Orphan outright. However, we do know of a rather important High Elf that is constantly on the move and would be a perfect target, Sea Lord Aisling, the leader of the Lothan Sea Patrol. This is a character who is defending the shores of Orthwan, meaning that if you get rid of him, Ulf 1 will be slightly less defended, barring, you know, the loads of moeworms that live under the actual shores of Ulf 1. He's a very popular character, as we know him from way back in the day in the Storm of Chaos, obviously with the Lothan Sea Patrol, so it would bring in a mobile high elf type of army with the Lothan Skycutter, obviously moeworm units too, because they're technically in the game, I mean, well, there is one moeworm in the game, but not as a proper unit. If CA and Games Workshop can collaborate once again, they could add in the rest of the High Elf Sea Patrol, make them quite unique, as most of those units were literally just kit bashers. And yeah, 
we've got a decent pack. The High Elves could use a bunch more skirmishing troops, which would be kind of cool. Being mobile with the High Elves is obviously quite beneficial, but having some skirmish units would add a little bit more to that. And I'm imagining that we could have a Vampire Coast kind of situation with the Loth and Sea Patrol being pseudo hordes, as something like that would make a lot of sense. Plus, it would mean that you wouldn't be stuck in just off one. I imagine we'd start in the Isles very close to Ind, actually, and just have a totally mobile campaign with the High Elves, which would give you reason to explore, use the sea lanes to go to different countries and continents, and just, in general, have a lot more fun, because a lot of the High Elves are centered around Off one and that is kind of boring. Uh, obviously, you've got Imric, which is fighting heavily against the Chaos Dwarves, and Teclis, which just kind of has a bad start. But the ones that many people play, you know, Tyrion and obviously Alariel, are in Off one There's way too much happening there. It's way too much of the same... I honestly think that having a pseudo-horde faction for the High Elves would be absolutely amazing. The High Elves as a faction are perfectly fine. I know some people are going to get a little bit pissed off at that. They're very vanilla. That is very, very true. But as far as I've been playing with the High Elves, everything works as intended. You know, after the Sunfang quest was fixed, uh, it took about five times, but hey. I would love to see the High Elf faction improved upon, but it's one of these things where I think they're probably going to keep it as vanilla as possible. Because again, it's like the 8th edition army, it's like their lore, they're not really all out there. The separate factions have their own mechanics, barring I think Tyrion and Teclis. Well, even Teclis does have a little bit of uniqueness to him. But I think it works quite well, and I think the High Elves are perfectly fine. It's the Dark Elves which would get the most attention here. You see, the Dark Elves have been in a weird place lately. Uh, the slavery mechanic obviously got changed, and it doesn't work as well, uh, which is weird, considering that we had then had a DLC which was focused around that with the Chaos Dwarves, and yet the Dark Elves didn't really get any benefit from that. Uh, so I imagine that they could put the most attention for the Dark Elves in this section. Let's be very honest here, there are certain DLCs where some factions get more attention than the others, and I would see it as this. The Dark Elves would get the most attention because they desperately need it, then the High Elves to kind of flesh them out a little bit more, whereas the Sinesh faction would get the least attention, uh, as really the Sinesh faction is fine, uh, I like. I really enjoy playing them. They've got unique mechanics. They've obviously got a lot going for them. They've got a really good roster, barring some things here and there that we discussed in the other video yesterday. But I think that that's the most educated guess that can happen. Now, a big issue is there's not a lot of missing stuff for the Dark Elves. It's like, pretty, pretty small. Seriously, anything that's actually missing is pretty minuscule. What I would imagine that they could do here is likely wait for Games Workshop, or they're probably working with Games Workshop to create some new units for the Dark Elves who are in desperate need of something new. Something a little bit different, because a lot of the Dark Elf roster right now kinda feels the same. So yeah, originality would work here. The issue is that it kinda goes to legendary characters too. Really, the only big names that we're missing are Shadowblade, which was technically featured in Warhammer 2 uh, due to the story, Kuron Darkhand, which is the captain of the Black Guard, and Talaris Dreadbringer. I would personally prefer Shadowblade, as it would be kind of interesting. Very similar to Deathmaster Snicket, yes, but it kind of makes sense to have the Assassin go and deal with the High Elves to give the souls to Sunesh. Again, I know very similar to Deathmaster Snicket, but you would want someone stealthy to influence what is happening in the battlefield and so on. And it would be cool to have an assassin legendary character for the Dark Elves. Let's be honest, it would be something very different. And yeah, the thing with Warhammer Fantasy is a lot of the tropes kind of merge into other races and factions. It's the same reason why we have so many characters with the Wanderer title, right? An assassin legendary lord such as Shadowblade would be very similar to an assassin legendary lord such as Deathmaster Snickitch because they're both assassins. And they could probably do some fun, interesting, unique mechanics rather than a shadowy dealings contract 2.0 thing. But it is always important to point out that Creative Assembly have surprised us with mechanics before. I mean, the Monogod factions are all a perfect example of that. And obviously the Chaos Dwarves are an amazing example of that. So I imagine that if they do something with Shadowblade, they could actually do something pretty interesting. Now you might be wondering, you've said that the Dark Elves are gonna get the most attention. This doesn't really seem like it. And that's because the Dark Elves would have to be subject to a rather large rework. This is something that comes with a patch, but usually reworks come alongside the same race as the DLC, as that justifies the dev time. It's what we've seen with the Warriors of Chaos, for example. Now, 
this is where things get interesting. You know, Malekith would need to get a few fixes here and there, because right now he plays like a vanilla Dark Elf. But he is the faction leader, so he does deserve something rather unique. I'm not saying something too unique, because obviously they need to have a faction which is very uh, vanilla style. I'm not sure why, but they did make that statement. I'm saying something like taking over Orf 1, a mechanic to be able to maybe recruit some High Elves, or just some questing system to take back what is rightfully yours you know you are the rightful phoenix king which is highly debatable and then obviously the end times thing happened but we're not going to talk about that worthless piece of fan fiction because no anyways this would be the perfect time to fix up morafi too give her a proper hybrid faction you know the proper cult of sunesh as it would be very unique yes this is me showing a little bit of bias here but the Storm of Chaos list for Morafi was absolutely impressive, and this would allow for another reason to play a Dark Elf faction, which would be totally different from all the others. Replayability is a massive thing for Total War Warhammer, and the fact that we're starting to see races uh, get their DLCs and be so different, like for example, how pretty much all the Warriors of Chaos are very different, barring the base ones from, well, Kolek and Archeon, because uh, Sigvald still has a unique thing to him, right? Or even Nakai the Wanderer, Oxyodal, we get a bit of unique stuff, we can see that expand further and further and further, and the more that Creative Assembly do this, the more people are going to play the game. At the end of the day, they want as many people playing as possible, because that would mean that maybe they'll be able to get more time with it, possibly put more dev time into it, and that means more DLCs in the future. Now, obviously, I could be very wrong here, but I feel like theming is very important I personally like the theme DLCs a lot more because matchups are cool, right? So, say for example, The Warden and the Paunch, absolutely phenomenal DLC because the matchup was something that people have been asking for for a while. So, Nash versus High Elves is a matchup that I really, really, really want and add some Dark Elves into it, complete the theme, get a lot of the factions up and dusted, and then they can focus on the ones that desperately need more help, like Lizardmen, which I imagine would be against Cafe. Uh, we'll talk about that another day, obviously. And um, there's a few others, obviously. But yeah, I really think that this would work out well. Hopefully Creative Assembly think the same way as me. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. But until then, I'll see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.